And good evening. Thank you for joining us for our midweek Bible study. Great to have you with us this week. Trust your time has gone far, has gone well so far. Trust you've had a good week. Been a busy time here at the church. We are now past the halfway mark of our five-day club, and we've had good attendance. Had some new boys and girls came yesterday. And so uh, just having a good time with the boys and girls each day. Let me just remind you, it runs from 10 until 12. If you have grandchildren or neighbors' children that you want to bring or your own, uh, you can be here tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. It runs from 10 until noon. Appreciate all the help, different ones that are helping along the way. Particularly, I want to say a thank you to our young people, Addie and uh, America, for helping with the food and prep, for Angie for all the work that she's done as it's come forth for Miss Tina Hill, who's also helped with it. And uh, also, um, he's been around and not as much for the club. He's helped some on the outside. Brother Mike Wood, thank you for being around. Thanks for helping various things. Glad to have you with us tonight. Let me continue to remind you, don't forget on Sunday, this coming Sunday, is a joint service with our church in Anchor. We'll be at Anchor Baptist Church on Lakeview Drive. If you have any questions, call the office. Our normal times, their services are the same as ours. 9.30 life groups, 10.30 morning service, uh, 5 p.m. afternoon service. Looking forward to a great time. Those of you who are choir members, don't forget, there's a combined choir rehearsal and instrumental rehearsal on Saturday. Instrumentalists meet at 9 and choir at 10. So plan on from 10 to 12 having our um, having your choir rehearsal. Then looking forward to a great day on Sunday. So make plans to be a part of it. Uh, don't forget that tomorrow we resume our Golden Agers and they're meeting at Epicurean tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. So make plans to be a part of that. A lot of things happening. A lot of things going on. Thank you for joining us for the study tonight. And then, oh, by the way, don't forget, uh, we'll mention it in our prayer time. Uh, next week, our youth will be going to the youth conference uh, with C.T. Townsend up in Pigeon Forge. Looking forward to a great time uh, there. As we begin, let me just call your attention to a few prayer requests within our church family and extended church family and friends. Uh, Carrie Brown does begin uh, radiation treatments on the 26th. Be praying for her. You see Ruth Delzell, she continues going through treatments. Uh, as she continues, pray for her. Brother Danny Rao had a procedure last week. I think it was an angiogram. Uh, he was recovering this past Sunday. He got a chance to speak to Martha. He said he was still a little bit weak from it. So do be praying for Brother Danny as he recovers. We'll look forward to seeing him back. Uh, new on the prayer list, you see Chris Swanson is having knee surgery uh, next week. Pray for uh, Chris. And then Steve Vaughn. Uh, Brother Steve continues to deal with some back issues. And by the way, Crystal spoke to me Sunday. She's got some issues with her back as well, so be praying for her. And then uh, another prayer request was given to Pastor Hugh Burdett's wife, Renee. And so found some things, and we're going to be having some further uh, tests and information on be praying for them. I know they would appreciate it. And then last, you see the youth conference, the upcoming youth conference. Pray for us as we go uh, next week. Looking for a great time in uh, with the young people at the youth conference, Brother C.T. Townsend. Uh, do be in prayer for that. And then keep in mind, we will not have our Monday night uh, or our Monday night Bible study or Thursday morning prayer meeting, and we'll not have a midweek service broadcast last week because I will be up there with our youth. So please keep those things in mind uh, and be in prayer for these requests that we have. Our missionaries of the week are Dan and Kathy Spencer. Uh, the Spencers are, uh, they're based in West Virginia, but they work with the First American Baptist uh, Missions Ministries, ministering to the Indians, uh, the Native Americans. And so do, in, do be in prayer, Brother Dan and Miss Kathy Spencer. In light of their work, and they were out in New Mexico for many years, we've got a trivia for you. Actually, I've got a trivia and a bonus question for you tonight. Now, it's a little bit wordy, so listen to what I give you. See if you can come up with the answer, all right? Here is your trivia. The Four Corners Monument is the only place in the United States where four states intersect. The states are Arizona, New Mexico, Utah, and Colorado. That's the only spot. On that spot, you can be in four states at one time. 
The Navajo Nation Reservation is located, it's a massive reservation that's located in parts of three of those four states. Your question is, which state is not part of the reservation? Which state is the part of the reservation not located, all right? So that's your trivia. And then your bonus question is, how many acres does the reservation cover? Now, there are a couple of different answers I'll take because I found a couple of different answers in a couple of different places. But those are your questions. Which state is not part of the reservation? And how many acres does the reservation cover? Let's see if you can come up with that. It'll be a good opportunity for you to... Um, uh, test your research method though most of you I know you just google it but let's see how you do it coming up with it and even as you do that I just remembered I forgot to silence my phone so I'm going to silence my phone so it'll just vibrate instead of, of um, uh, coming on uh, while I am speaking all right hey let's have a word of prayer and then we'll get into our Bible study tonight Father we do love you and we thank you for the evening we have to come together Lord, as we come, we do have these names that have been given that we want to bring before you. We pray for Carrie as she begins her treatments. Pray you'll give uh, strength in her body, help it to recover from the treatments uh, between times. Uh, we pray for Miss Ruth Delzell. Ask that you'll just continue to strengthen her as she goes through her ongoing treatments. Lord, we thank you that uh, Brother Danny was able to get in, have the procedure done. I do ask that you'll strengthen his body and raise him up. Uh, Lord, pray for Chris as uh, next week approaches for knee surgery. I uh, pray you'll give the doctors wisdom. And Lord, we always come to you beyond what the doctors are capable of and we're grateful for their training. We come to you as a great physician and ask that you would uh, just touch and bring healing. Pray for Brother Steve Vaughn. Uh, Lord, I know he's been dealing with a lot, a lot with his back uh, from, the, uh, from the car wreck. I pray that you would bring him to the right doctor who can bring the right uh, care that will get relief uh, from the pain I know he'd appreciate that uh, pray for uh, Pastor Hugh Burdett's wife Renee ask that you would uh, give doctors wisdom give grace there give, um, help them to uh, know what needs to be done or even perhaps to be able to come back that uh, it's not anything of consequence but Lord I do we do lift her up I know it's an unnerving time as you're waiting for answers and then Lord we pray for our young people pray that next week as they go to the youth conference that you would use that to mold and shape their lives give them eternal purpose uh, pray you'll give us safety as we travel give us a good time up there but most of all uh, help that through it we'll be more like Christ and more committed to serving you Bless our Bible study tonight. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to open to Proverbs chapter 13. Book of Proverbs chapter 13. I was noting in this chapter that there are eight, there's a pair of words that appears eight times in this chapter. And I started looking at it. And as I did, I thought I would take just a few moments tonight and see if we can't draw some practical truths from, uh, from that and some just some practical principles from Proverbs. It was interesting just this week as on the phone with someone and one of these verses just came to mind and how in their, their, it had been used in a wrong way, at, taken out of context, but I'm trusting that these will be some things that in context and with a note of what it says, it will help us as we look into God's Word. So Proverbs chapter 13, and we'll look at practical principles from Proverbs. So let's start right there and we will uh, we'll begin. The first ones I want you to see are found in verse 3. There are two. The, 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 the phrase I want you to see, the couplet of words I want you to say it, see is he that. That phrase is he that. Now you're going to see that eight times in this chapter. He that. Now basically what it's saying is it's not just talking about men, it's talking about everybody. The person that okay that's what it's trying to drive home here the first two are paired in verse 3 and notice what it says he that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life he that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction now can I say to you what he's trying to remind us of 
in other places in Proverbs, it talks about when you do enough talking, it's inevitable that you're going to end up in sin. You're going to end up doing wrong. You'll end up either gossiping, you're going to end up telling something that's maybe a bl- beyond the truth, or you're going to relay inaccurate information or whatever it is. But in many words, or one if not for sin, Proverbs tells us that. Here what he's trying to encourage and remind people is that you need to watch your mouth. Watch what you say. James put it this way. Be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath. But here in this, it says, He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. He that openeth wide his lips shall have destruction. You're going to end up, people who talk too much end up invariably hurting someone, hurting themselves, causing a problem, creating a discord, something happens. So what's the truth that we can take from this he that, these two he that statements? I put this truth down, and here's what it is. The more we talk, the more likely we are to say something we will regret. The more you talk, the more likely you are to say something that you're going to end up regretting. That is so important to remember. Sometimes, I think if we aren't careful, we talk just to talk. We talk just because we want to say something. Sometimes when we don't know what to say, we say something. We, we, we still talk. The more we talk, the more likely we are to say something we'll regret. You know, that's a great truth. That's a great truth. Sometimes that can help you in the workplace. Sometimes that can help you in situations in life. Sometimes when you're not sure what to say, just don't say anything. Just remain quiet. And that's what he's trying to give. So verse 3 gives you the first two of the he that statements. And the truth is the more we talk, the more likely we are to say something we will regret. Number two, the second one we see in verse 11. Second, we see is verse 11. These are practical truths. He that gathereth by labor shall have increase. He that gathereth by labor shall have increase. Now, it's interesting here because the first part of this verse, he says, wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished. But then he goes on to say, he that gathereth by labor shall shall increase now if we don't gather by labor how do we get it how do we get it Uh, it could be that we get it because it's given to us it could be that we get it because of a benevolent deed that's done to us it could be that it comes to us by some other means but what he's trying to emphasize here is the things that you work for and attain shall have increase he that gathers how does he get it not because someone did it for him not because someone handed it to him not because someone provided it for him but he went out and earned it and in these days very many times it was earned by the sweat of your brow it was earned by manual labor it was earned through hard work he that gathereth by labor he that gets what he gets through work shall have increased now you say what is it what's the truth that goes with that here's a great truth i think comes from this earning money or it could be earning whatever earning money teaches a greater sense of its value earning money teaches a greater sense of its value let me give you an example I've I've had kids on trips and and observed kids on trips and sometimes particularly if they aren't old enough to hold a job or something invariably the way that they have the money to go on the trip will be because they their mom or their dad will give them money so that they can have it for the trip it's amazing how quickly children in in situations like that can spend money 
boy I've had them at junior camp and every time the canteen opened man they're there and they're buying this they're buying that sometimes buying stuff they don't most of the time buying stuff they don't need sometimes they buy stuff that they don't finish sometimes they get stuff and then they'll just hand it out to other people and they're just they're, they're, it's so easy for them to spend money that's been given to them because they don't have a sense of value but you watch a kid that maybe he earns his money he goes out and <clears throat> he cuts grass and and uh he does work for people maybe he rakes leaves maybe whatever it does he goes out and works and he earns that money now he has earned that money by the sweat of his brow many times not that they're selfish and 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 hoarding it but when they've earned it and it's been earned through work you know what they understand better the value of it that dollar bill that five dollar bill that ten dollar that means more to them and many times when it's money that they have had to work and earn they'll be more conservative in how they let it go how they let it leave their hands and so the truth here is earning things earning something gives us a greater appreciation will cause us to take better care be more conservative and so consequently he that gathereth by labor shall have increase that's a great truth I think sometimes people of, of, of our culture have gotten away from that and so that's what he that's what he has have you ever known somebody and, and many times if you follow the stories of these people that win the lottery or whatever and they get this sudden influx of money and you see what it does to them over time and sometimes they'll come back and do follow up on those that have won these millions of dollars and you'll find that many times later they're back to being broke or they've got broken relationships or they're in a miserable situation the, the reason is they acquired something that they didn't labor for and because of that they didn't view it invest it spend it save it conserve it because it wasn't gained by by labor so that's a great truth for you isn't that a good aren't these practical things you find in proverbs look a couple verses down here's the next one in verse 13 he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. He actually, the first part of the verse is, he, is here. He says, whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. But he that feareth the commandment, this commandment you can understand, has to do with the commands of God, God's word, the scripture. That's one of the things, commands, that's one of the things, word. Those are all terms that are used to talk about the word of God. He that feareth the commandment has a that that fear that that's a reverence a respect for it shall be rewarded shall be rewarded Sunday night we mentioned the verse in Galatians Galatians chapter 6 where it says um, be not weary in well-doing for in due season ye shall reap if you faint not be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He talks about the fact that he that soweth to the flesh of the flesh reap uh, destruction. But he that soweth to the Spirit. He talks about the rewards of sowing to the Spirit. The rewards of a reverential commitment to the commandments of God. So what's the truth that we could take from this? <clears throat> Here's the truth. Respectful obedience of God's law is rewarded respectful obedience of God's law is rewarded isn't that great to know sometimes in the immediate it can seem like a difficulty and it can seem like things are not uh, coming out like we want them to it can seem and we've been on Monday nights we've been looking at Malachi and at one point they say hey what good is it that we've obeyed that we've obeyed the law or what good is there in following your God's law but here they give us that reminder what a great reminder it is rewarded it is rewarded that's verse 13 
Look at the next one down in verse 20. Look at verse 20. Here's your next he that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, verse 18. Verse 18. And I'm looking to see if I've lost one here in the process. Maybe Let me give you this one. He that regardeth reproof shall be honored. He that regardeth reproof shall be honored honored uh and i was working on this and i may have deleted this when i was saving things and putting them back so um i know babe you're running the powerpoint for me there uh so we'll just work through this one <clears throat> here he gives this this is another he that it's verse 18 he that regardeth reproof shall be honored now what is reproof reproof is correction that's given reproof is someone telling you something that you've done wrong it can be a rebuke it can be a correction. Now, he says, he that regardeth that, he that taketh that to heart, shall be honored. Now, listen closely. Sometimes through the course of life, you may find that you're rebuked. It could be a situation in work. It could be a situation in church. It could be a friend that speaks truth into your life. Sometimes It's never fun to be called out. It's never fun to be rebuked. But here in verse 18, he reminds us that he that regardeth reproof, he that takes it to heart, shall be honored. Back to the first part of the verse, verse 18, it says, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction. Can I give you a great truth? People who will receive correction properly will be respected. People who will receive correction properly will be respected. By the way, this always, when I was looking at this verse today, it reminded me of what I refer to as the let principle. The let principle, L-E-T-T. -T. Preacher friend shared this with me years ago. Never forgotten it. He said, a preacher shared with him. He said, when someone gives you something, a, a, a critique, uh, a rebuke, uh, an instruction, he said, sometimes what you do is use the let principle, L-E-T-T. -T. First, you listen. First, you listen. Second, you evaluate. You evaluate what they've told you. So someone gives you this rebuke or this instruction or this correction. You take it. You listen to them. Then you evaluate the legitimacy of it. Is it something that has merit? And then based on what you find there, you either take it, take the input, and act upon it, or you toss it. An example. So someone comes up to a preacher and he goes, you know, preacher, I don't think you ought to be wearing that red tie. Red's such a bright color, and, it, and, it, and it's a color that symbolizes anger. You shouldn't read. What do you do? Number one, I listen. After they've told me what they feel is their rebuke of me or their correction of me, I evaluate. As I evaluate, I think about, is there any legitimacy to it? And in that case, I may come to a point of saying, you know what? That really doesn't matter to me. I'm going to toss it. But if they give me something and say whatever the rebuke was is something that I determined is something I need to address in my life, then I take it. Verse 18. He that regardeth reproof shall be honored. People will respect a person that can receive correction. That's a great one. Okay, now, let's go to verse 20. Sorry, I missed over, skipped over that one. Verse 20, <clears throat> here's one. Another he that, he that walketh with wise men shall be wise. The verse goes on with a contrast, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. You want to know how to be wiser in your Christian life? Hang out with wise friends. You know how to be more godly? Hang out with godly friends. You know how to, how to make better decisions in your life? Hang out with those that have established a process and make, have, a, have a, uh, a track record of making wise decisions. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. 
So what's the truth that we have here? Here's the truth that I put with this one. My companions will influence my judgment. My companions will influence my judgment. You know, the truth of the matter is, the people that I hang around with, they will impact my life. They'll impact my decisions. They'll impact my attitudes. They'll influence my actions. So it's important to walk with wise men if you want to be wise. Isn't that a great principle? Just a great principle to use there. One last one or two that are coupled together right down in verse 24. Two more he that's. They're both found. There are two in this verse. The first one is this. He that spareth his rod hateth his son. Okay, the first one is he that spareth the rod. Now, this is not a, a verse about abusive treatment. Understand this. Abusive treatment is wrong but there is a place for discipline there is a place for chastening there is a place for disciplining of your children he that spareth the rod hateth his son and then the second part is he that loveth him chasteneth him now you see that word betimes that doesn't mean he does it between times it doesn't mean hey I got onto him back here I'll probably have to get onto him up here, but somewhere here I probably missed something, so I'm going to spank him just for the sake of it in case I missed something. It's not between times. It actually means as often as necessary. The man that loveth his son will chasten him as often as is needed to help direct the steps of that child. That's what he's trying to get here. To not discipline your children is not loving them. Can I tell you this to every parent? Failing to discipline your children, that's not loving them. Some parents don't discipline their children because they're, they're weary and they don't want the hassle of it. Some people don't discipline their children because they, uh, they're afraid their children won't like them. Some people don't discipline their children because it's just too much work. But he says here, the great sign of your love for your child is that you will correct them, discipline them, disciple them as often as it takes, especially through those formative years. So what's the truth that we have here? Here's your truth. Proper parental discipline is an evidence of love and requires consistency okay look at that again proper parental discipline is an evidence of love and requires consistency the first part is an evidence of love that comes from the first one and the beginning of the second one requires consistency that's from that word betimes can I tell you child rearing is work it's work it's time consuming it's work it's wearying at times but at the end of the day it's a way that we truly love our children so these are some great truths that you have here in this passage the more we talk the more likely we are to say something that we'll regret earning money teaches a greater sense of its value respectful obedience of God's law is rewarded verse 18 uh, he that listens that regardeth reproof properly responding to correction will bring honor will bring you respect verse 20 he that walketh with wise men shall be wise my companions will influence my judgment and finally verse 24 proper parental discipline is an evidence of love and requires consistency what a great reminder I trust you'll take these hey Proverbs has such practical things that you can use in your everyday life 
that will help you to live in a way that others will say, and there's something different about him. There's something different about her. Be praying toward the services on Sunday. Do not forget, we'll be meeting at Anchor of Hope Baptist Church for the services. Look forward to seeing you there. Life group at 930, morning service, 1030, evening praise, 5 p.m. Don't forget, if you want to ride from here at the church, there'll be a van leaving here at 9 a.m., so feel free to come and join us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the day and the time that we have together. Lord, thank you for your word and how it is so practical for the things that we deal with. Lord, use it to shape our lives and to mold us that we might be more like Christ. We'll thank you for that. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.